So welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining us for our workshop on this very hot evening. I'm hoping it's cooling down for everybody a little bit. Fingers crossed. Um, so I'm Claire from Coppens and our workshop this evening is going to be presented um, by the marvellous uh, creative designer and lettering artist Sue Smith. You can see at the top of the screen, give us a wave Sue. She's, mar she's marvellous. Yeah, there we are. There we are. She's with us. Great. Um, so Sue's going to be introducing us to uh, the wonderful world of uh, hand lettering and she's going to be using a mix of Faber-Castell uh, pens and markers and we'll come on to all of that in a bit. Um, I will be handing over to Sue in just a moment but before I do we've got the usual bits of housekeeping to cover. So we are recording the session uh, but don't panic all of your cameras and sound are switched off for the duration of the session so you can make as much noise as you like. Uh, obviously our sound and cameras awesome. are on if you do have any questions we love getting questions so please use the chat function hopefully some of you are posting in at the moment um, please use the chat function or there's a q a button um, uh, it's on the bottom of my screen it may be somewhere else around the edge on yours but um, please post any questions that you have in there um, for sue as we go along or questions for us so um, myself and Anna from the Colt Pens uh, team are here and we're going to try and keep going with your um, uh, answering your questions as we go through. So throw anything else and we will also try and very gently interrupt Sue as we go along if there's any questions you want to ask her about the technique <laughs> and what she's doing. Um, we've also got Steve here from West Designs um, so he'll hopefully be able to answer any questions uh, of a particularly technical product nature as well. Um, so we think the session is going to be about an hour. If anyone that's joined us before, our sessions usually take about an hour. So please do get comfortable, perhaps have a little fan. I'll be doing that intermittently. You'll see me throughout. Um, uh, get comfy, drum roll. And here we are handing over to Sue. I'm going to just switch our cameras over. Here we go. Hi Sue, perhaps you'd like Hello. to start by letting us, telling us a little bit about yourself and your experience of uh, brush lettering, hand lettering and, and how you're here presenting to us today. Right, <laughs> welcome, welcome into my craft space, it's very hot in here. Um, yes, I mean I love hand lettering and brush lettering and I've been doing it for quite a few years now. It first started in the 1990s when I was lucky enough to get um, a job at a wholesale greeting card company. And I was starting to do hand lettering for captions on the cards. And it was, it, a lot of it was done by hand. Um, we didn't have brush pens back then, actually. We, we were creating that brush lettered look with a fine liner sort of a graphic sort of pen. Um, but then that was quite good because it enabled me to learn where the thick and thin areas should be. And then a, a bit later on, br uh, brush lettering became very popular in the, in the crafting world, which is where I'm based more so really. I absolutely love crafting. I've gone through all sorts of different genres and things, but paper crafting, I kind of stuck at it and you know, scrapbooking and card making. So the hand lettering really sort of blends in with that sort of art as well, that craft. And then, um, yeah, it became so popular. So I thought I hadn't done it, you know, since back then because we were all made redundant actually in the late 1990s. And I ended up working at a guard, local garden centre. Um, so I didn't do any hand lettering for a while, but then I thought, oh, I must get back into this because it was popular. And then I found myself getting to grips with it quite quickly. So um, I was lucky enough to, you know, do a bit of hand lettering and um, West Design were good enough to sort of notice that. And I, I absolutely loved their Faber-Castell pens. I've been using those. So, you know, I became a brand ambassador for West Design and it's all developed from there. So, yeah, I've been having a great time and I've had a great journey. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank, thank you. That's a love, lovely intro. I just need to interrupt with a bit of housekeeping because I don't know what, how we've managed it, but we managed to disable the chat function. 
it is working now I think and like a few people are posting so please do post and tell us where you're joining from yes a few temperature updates from around as well um Sue whereabouts are you geographically I'm in the UK I'm in Milton Keynes right in the middle of the country where it's very warm I was going to say very very hot so I'm south Mm -hmm. Devon I'm about an hour south of where Colt Pens are based in Tiverton and we've dropped to a very comfortable 22 degrees it feels still uh, allegedly it still feels about 30 to me so I, I'm I'm not sure oh and someone's just saying they're very near you in Milton Keynes oh, oh very it's about 39 today <laughs> it's, it's a bit it is a bit too much for all of us isn't it yeah um, but we've also got some internationals joining us as well so thank you everybody wow. do, do keep posting in the chat now we've got it working sorry about that um <laughs> so if you're ready yes should we, we go ahead switch, we switch, yeah switch over and just get get ourselves going let me switch the cameras over yeah. let me get working there we go hello hello right so let's get started with the workshop so let me just show you quickly the pens that i like to use we've got the faber castell um albert dura watercolor markers the, I love these because they are a chunky marker size. So they're a bigger size that you can create bigger lettering. And then we've got the Pit Artist brush pens that are really fabulous because they're, they're beautiful, fine nibbed pen um, in all sorts of colours, very flexible. So I really like using those. And we're going to practice and um, do our beginner's guide to lettering with these. I've also got some metallic ones. These are ballpoint pens, which which I like to use as well. They're really lovely on black. If we've got time, we could perhaps have a little play with that. And I also really love the Faber-Castell water brush as well. So we're going to be using that as well and see, see what happens and see how far we get. Right, so this is a real beginner's course so i'm going to take you all back to basics and back to school i think a bit more room so let's get rid of that and i've kind of devised a sort of workshop that you could sort of do at home you hopefully you don't need to download any lettering um, templates or anything i think it's quite nice to start with your own lettering and your own abilities so hopefully it's not too difficult and you'll be able to sort of join in or or um, remember what I've said and have a go at home so to start with this is just a basic A4 lined piece of ruled paper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some grid lines so I'm going to draw a mark down here now I'm just using the chunky the watercolour marker, the ballpoint nib, just to do this. Okay, so I'm going to to create some sort of markers at the side. And what I've done is I've created a baseline. Because whenever you do lettering, especially to start with, it's just wonderful to have guidelines. So it helps you and you know where you're going and what you're doing. Because when you begin, you do like all the help you can get. That's what I think anyway, that's that's what I enjoyed. So here we are, we've got our baseline and then we've got two lines up, draw another line, which is actually your X height line. And this is the height of our small characters. Then we've got an ascender line at the top, which is one line above for the sort of top of the H's and things like that. And then a descender line, which can carry the, the bottom swirls of Y's and things like that. So I've done these markers, I'm going to do them all the way down. So that's my X height area, because I'm going to make use of all the lines on this piece of paper. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to school. And the very beginning thing you need to remember and and sort of refresh yourself with, refresh yourself with, is that we have to actually write letters the correct way like we did at school very simply so you must start at the usual you know the the common place come round go up for the d the e starts in the middle i know you all know how to write but 
we do need to remember how to do this like properly. A, B, C, D, E, F, G comes round. I, lo- then- I like that you had to check the alphabet there. But I, <laughs> I'm watching you and going, yeah, oh, I, don't, I don't actually do my letters like that anymore. Because we all develop, you know, little nuances and styles, don't we, as we, as we go along. Yeah, maybe bad habits. Maybe bad you habits. You could as call well. it that, Sue. I'd like to say it's personality in my handwriting. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> I think your <laughs> bad habits is definitely more accurate. Yeah. So do that. Actually, I forgot I have drawn a few lines at the top because that's going to help with some practice strokes. So yes, get yourself a template with the basic simple alphabet. What I love is tracing paper. This is going to be your best friend because it's a wonderful see-through opacity to it. It's very smooth. It doesn't soak up ink. So it's going to be very kind to your pen's nibs because when you're practicing, the paper is very important. If you've got a rough paper that's very absorbent, you're going to use up a lot of your ink. You're going to start deteriorating the nib of your pens and crushing the nib. They might start fraying at the end and it mainly is because of the paper. So tracing paper, I just think is beautiful. It's wonderful. It's very sort of gliding. And, you know, we've got our template underneath so we can see and we know what we're doing. So I picked out the pit pen, picked out a blue. So the first thing to start with is how to hold the pen. So we've got our forearm resting on the table and we're using our wrist as a pivot and we're holding the pen at a nice angle. Don't sort of go like this with it because you could crush the nib. The the nib will work better if you're holding it at an angle. Okay, so to start with, we need to just do tiny lines up. Just lightly, very gently touch the paper and do some lines going up gentle lines and then do all of the ones on your template these fine lines are actually the hardest ones to do to be honest people might think that the adding pressure and doing the solid lines is difficult but this is quite satisfying so really put pressure on the pen and see the flexibility in that nib hopefully you can dragging it down put pressure on straight away drag it get a lovely bold line, lift off at the bottom. You know, you don't have to go and then lift off, just gently lift the pen up off the bottom. And you get kind of a nice point at the end rather than going sort of bold lines like that. So have a go at that. And this is getting a feel for the pen and the paper and what the pen can achieve for you. Don't be shy to put pressure on because the pen is, is, good enough to accept that pressure. Now try alternating your mark. So up and downward pressure, fine up, downward pressure. Now this is really good, this practice, these marks for your sort of, um, your your mind memory, because you need to start doing this off by heart. And you will, the more practice that you do, you will start sort of muscle memory I suppose that's what I was trying to say you do sort of eventually do it off by heart so now I'm connecting these lines with a connector still keeping smooth up put pressure on down so you notice that sometimes my line is even breaking the fine line like there because I'm putting that little pressure on and this is why the fine lines are more difficult to do you can always go back in and touch it in afterwards that's fine round pressure up this mark making is really useful and it is a good start to just get into practicing this before you then think about your letter formation and then try it the other way as well um you could try going up and down and then connecting back round. So you actually then start creating some circles. And then with these circles, you notice you've got a thin side and a thick side because we are going up one way and back down the other. 
So we're not going to get a circle with, you know, two thick sides either side. So have a practice with these circles. Now, this is important as well. This is probably one of my best tips, actually, or an important tip, I should say. When you do a circle, if I sort of go up at this side, actually, and come round, because this is actually like starting to do the letter A. What you need to do is to start adding pressure at this point here, which is, um, uh, what's that, 11 o'clock? About 11 o'clock, isn't it? Rather than 12 o'clock, okay? Start adding pressure at 11 o'clock and then decrease the pressure at seven o'clock rather than six o'clock, okay? So, because you might think, oh, I need to add the pressure at the top and the bottom. Now, let me see if I can do that if, it's hard to do something that I'm not used to doing. Okay, so what happens is you get um, the thick line still at the top and the thick line at the bottom, which isn't what we want. We actually want a nice thin line at the top and bottom and the thick line just to appear down the side at the downward stroke. So you know, apply pressure just after your letter, just after, and then just before you get to the bottom. So you keep that nice thin line top and bottom. Okay, now for creating some of these letters. So start off with the A. What I actually think is a good starting point, actually, I'm going to pick go back to the watercolour marker. The beauty about these pens actually is that the colours, they have a colour reference number, they're exactly the same. So here I've got exactly the same colour, one, one, one O. Oh. So I know that this ink is exactly the same with whatever pen I choose. And that's what I love about the Castell pens. Okay, am I getting out of view? Right then, so what I'd like you to do next then with your template, is just go over with the ballpoint nib and redraw round all the letters to start with. Now, what are we going? What we're going to do is to do some faux calligraphy, fake calligraphy, because I think this is a really good lesson to learn where the thick and thins go. So, when you do a downward stroke, add another line just uh, again, just past the top and before the bottom on all the downward strokes where you would write the letter down. So I'm gonna add this second line to the right of where I went down with my pen. That's why it's important to write the letters correctly to start with. Add a second line and then And this can be coloured in, and then what you achieve is your letters with the thick and thin without actually adding the pressure. But I like this exercise. Yeah, I like this exercise because half the thing about lettering is how I don't, I don't know if it's just the letter me. in your head. Ooh. I mean, I'm creative, so I'm very pictorial. We're just having a bit of sound difficulty, I think. It might just be me, but I just want to so, let you know. So your yeah, it's breaking up. I think yep. in terms of sound. So bear, hang on one second. Let me just I think. Just give it a second, and then go again. Just see if it if if it corrects. So your other video. I'm gonna stop the video um, and just keep the video on the camera that's on your hands. If I can, it's not behaving at all. I can't hear you now. You can't, can you hear me now? Okay. Shall we carry on? Yes, carry, carry on. So, so I can on. see the, I'll just be an extra reference point for you. So do this with the alphabet.
and you will get something like this. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. You went a little bit Dalek. The sound was very crackly. If you can, can you hear me now? Seems to have frozen. Let me have a look. You have. I've just stopped the camera. That's oh. the other camera, just to see if that helps a little bit with any connection or anything. And the sound, oh, okay. I think the sound seems to have come back. Yes, it's having a bit of trouble, isn't it? it? It is. It might be. If it's anything like Devon today, we did have a bit of a thunderstorm, so there's a bit of uh, a weather moving around the country, which never helps. Always makes things a bit strange. But you sound okay now, so I think we're good to get, okay. get back in. Sorry about it. that. Yeah. Not your fault. That's all good. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> so here we have the alphabet in our forks calligraphy, where we can see where the, the thicker areas are. Um, so that's a useful sort of exercise to do and to have a reference to as well. So I'm going to keep that so I can have a look at it. The next stage is then to actually take the brush nib and try and do our very basic um, brush lettering. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the A. I mean, you could jump to easy letters like the L, but um, we'll start with the A. So push outwards on the fine nib and then add pressure coming down to that A, back to your fine nib up to the top. And then to create the back of the A, just do come down with your pressure. The B, add the pressure straight down and then we come back up, add pressure down for that side of the B and back up. And the C, light to start with, add pressure and then lift off to create that letter. So you get a feel for it, go slowly and if you can create that thick and thin and just follow exactly the letter template that you've created yourself there. So it's very sort of basic and it should end up looking sort of a bit like this which does look quite a bit like our first one. So that's, that's a good thing. If you're not getting much definition, then you need to put, add even more pressure or lift off. You know, have a practice and see, see what you can get. Hold the, remember to hold the nib at, a, at an angle as well. Okay, so when you've done that, then we can start um, connecting the letters because that's the next stage that we need to think about. Brush lettering is actually like a modern form of like copper plate lettering because copper plate lettering is that very traditional lettering done with um, a solid nib pen and it, it the letters all flow and you can write a whole word without taking your pen off the paper and that, that is basically where brush lettering sort of stemmed from and the look of it. But it's, it's obviously in a much more modern way. And to, I mean, copper plate calligraphy is on, on the slant, on the italic, but we are learning straight up and down because that's the easiest stage to do first. So now we're going to connect all our alphabets together and we need connecting ins and connecting outs. So to connect into an A, we could do it from the bottom or midway or top. So I'm just going to do it sort, sort of towards the top and then do your brush lettered A. Don't lift the nib off and then just curl it back round to join to the B. When you've done your connector out, you can lift the pen off the paper, that's fine. And it's actually nice to move your hand across and take a breather. To start with, you might not breathe when you're doing that whole letter A. That's fine because you're focusing and concentrating. <laughs> OK, so then when we do the B, this is like the connector into the B. And I'm actually going to come up and do a little loop because I want to come to the top and then do my the back of the B and then come back round and then connect under. And now I'm over to this side of the B, I need to connect to the C. So I'm basically just going to go across like that because I'm, I'd like it to connect. Some people also just go back under, but I quite like to sort of create loops and movements with the letters. So now we're 
up here with the C, we can just write that and connect it to the D. OK, and then we can do our D. And I might do another loop to connect to the top to come back down and then to connect out to the E. And this is quite nice because we've got our template there as well. And we can just focus on writing the letter and then we can sort of join it onto the F. So the F is going to come right to the top and then right down to the bottom and then loop back in. But the connector then just comes out so I can then connect it to the G. And then I can write my G and then with all your tail letters, they could just loop back round if you like. And then people can add swashies, don't they? Swashies can be added and more decorative elements, but that can come later. Don't worry about that. So, so we've, hello. We've had, it's Claire again. We've had a question just about the difference in execution between the first example that you did and the second. So I think, I think just going back over the faux calligraphy yeah. versus your your beautiful handwriting your your the, the yeah. just to read that might, I think I think that, yeah, the that might be when, that might be when the um the uh, we lost a bit of sound yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so yes um do the clo faux calligraphy first get a ballpoint pen it's nice to do it in a different color I think so you can see and then all you do is just go over the letters as they exactly as they are. And then we're going to cheat and add our faux calligraphy. And this is adding a second line to wherever you write downwards. So with the A, I came down. So I'm going to add another down line just to the right of it. And then here I came down for the back of the A. So I'm just going to add a little loop and another line to the back of it. So with the B, I'm adding a line there and also there. The C, I came down the back there, so I'm going to add another line. So you just add this second line everywhere. Doesn't matter how thick. I mean, that looks quite nice in itself, having that, that double line sort of effect. But if we colour it in, then no one knows that we've added another line. Neat. And, and I guess if anyone doesn't feel like they've got the right tools to hand, the faux calligraphy, I mean, you could have a go with a pencil if you wanted to. So you've got something that is reasonably fine just to colour in. If, if anyone doesn't have um, all, all the right pens to test out today. Definitely. Then. Yeah, you can definitely do it with a pencil, any, any sort of fine nibbed pen, really. That's fine. And then what we're going to do is you could use this as reference then to then pick up your brush pen and then, you know, just practice your letter formation with that and come down, come back up fine. We're coming down again. So add that pressure. And then you will magically notice that they look quite similar. And if they are similar, then you've done a good job at your brush lettering. It's going, I mean, you probably won't get it as sort of, obvious as this to start with because it you've got to be brave and actually you know put that pressure on that nib and go for it so you know um don't get despondent you could go back to your lines up here and just you know have another practice with your drill lines and um yeah and you know take it very slowly and enjoy sort of creating these letters. So when you get to the linking stage, I'll call it, you know, you'll notice you get, you, you know, the letters are becoming more attractive. Let's do the I, I'm gonna come back up to the J, and then this comes to the K. I like looping up, coming down. I'm even going to do a loop here for the K, and then come back down, looping for the L. Nice loop at the bottom. Now, when you add your dots, they're heavy because they, they should really match the thickness of your downstroke. So don't do a little dot like that. Do a little stroke. OK, just do a little stroke and put pressure on. And it actually creates quite a nice shape as well. So with the M down, up, fine, down, up, fine, down, loop it out, connect it to the next letter. 
and then just carry on like that and then you'll get some nice loopy letters like this now the r i need to talk about the r because they i've done a normal r there but we need to do a copper plate r and i call it copper plate r because it's an r that you can create without lifting your your pen off the paper because with an r like that then you can't really connect it because it doesn't quite doesn't quite look right does it <laughs> so the copper plate r what we do is we come up from the bottom and we do a loop, put a bit of pressure on that loop so that you've got definition in the thick and thin there. And you are coming down as well. So put a little bit of pressure there and come. That can be above your X height line as well, that loop. Get to the top of your X height line. And now we go do the other part of the R, which is pressure down and do a nice downward sort of like an eye shape really and that's the copper plate r so to connect these two letters together i'm going to do my q come down fine up down for the back of the q i'm not going to just flick up i'm going to go back to the middle loop it into the middle and then the connector comes out i go up do my little loop at the top of my r bring it down thick and then loop it out and then if I just connect it to an S and then I'm going to loop out to the T come down and then I can do a nice curly cross to the T as well rather than the straight one so that's how the R's fit in um, all the cross part, cross bars, they are done fine in a fine nib, so don't add pressure onto those cross part bars. Uh, maybe I should mention the X as well. Um, let me do this line actually. So we loop into the top of the V, pressure down, light coming up, and then I just do a little loop at the top there, connect it to my next letter. And you know, it's nice to add these loops as well. So the W that comes down up down i mean that feels like a drill in itself just doing that w add a loop and then we're going to do a curly um, x so it comes round to there that side of it i'm going to loop through to the top and come down to create the other side of the x rather than doing an x like that which you can do um, if you want a break in those letters, but when, when you want it continuous, you can do an X like that and then finish off with the Y. I mean, I could go like that with the tail rather than going back through the letter. And then the Z, I've got a curly Z, and then I can just go out with it there as well. All right. Other than that, I think the other letters are more or less the same. Or well, apart from this the um you get reusing my bits of paper the um the o's a bit um um needs explaining as well um so with the the o we come in the bottom or the middle it depends on what letter you come from so you go up sort of three quarters of the way and then you do start doing the downward stroke to the bottom start lifting off so you go nicely, nice and light up to the top. And then you can just go back on itself with another loop and then loop out. And this just finishes the overall look of the, the O and it just creates that other loop as well. Because um, you end up over this side, so you want to loop it out. So you can actually sort of go back on itself. And you can get really creative with these O's as well. So you can sort of do your O and then you can go back far further if you wanted to and create a bigger top section of it. And that's, that applies to the R as well, actually. You can come up to the R and you create quite a big loop at the top and then downwards for your R shape. You know, these are little aspects that you can really sort of develop a style and sort of get really creative with. Okay, so then, you know, we've done our continuous line alphabet like that. And, you know, keep practicing, do a couple of these, you know, practice 
regularly as well in the evenings just do like a little 10 minute practice you know you don't have to sit for hours and do it but just little and often probably helps helps you even you know even better so then when you're confident at doing your sort of lettering and your lead-ins and things like that we could cheat a little bit further you know if you're keen to create a word so I'm just going to lightly draw a baseline because I you know it's nice to have guidelines I might even do a top line as well why not so I've got some a light pencil grid line there I'm going to get my brush pen now what we can do is we can cheat in a way I mean we're learning so we can sort of cheat so I'm going to um, letter the word create so I'm going to come in and, and do my lead in I'm going to create my C and focus on my C and then this is where the spelling goes out the window <laughs> because I'm focusing so much on writing the letters that I don't focus on the spelling. So um, what I've done is I've moved, I've created that C, I've moved it next to my R that I'm going to do my copper plate R, of course. So I'm going to come up my loop to the top and then just come down and link it through. And then I need to E, don't I? So I am cheating here because I'm just picking up my paper and placing it next to the letter using my template. But hey, you're still writing this word, aren't you? You're just, you know, getting a, slightly ahead of yourself if you wanted to create some lettering and give it to someone there and then. So why not have a go at this? We're practising our letters as well, after all, aren't we? I'm going to create a loopy T. And then we need an E on the end, don't we? So go for that, you know. Um, yeah, look, I've brush lettered a create word. And, you know, I'm really chuffed with that. So, you know, create a few words if you want to, if you want to, in this sort of cheated. Create brush lettered words. And, it, you know, it does look nice. It looks great. I don't think that's cheating, Sue. I think that's smart. <laughs> yeah. I know, think that works really it, well, especially when you're practicing. Exactly. To, to give you that consistency that's a really brilliant yeah. use of tracing paper for doing that i love it it is on tracing paper and not on solid paper but you know that this is the beginning stage what you can then do or as well after this stage you know you can say okay then let's let's write um let's write happy okay and i'm actually going to create my baseline and i'm going to pencil my letters i mean i could do this i know they they're all the same height then pencil in your letters and this is another way of having your guideline uh, the why 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 that's down there okay and then if we grab a plain piece of paper okay, plain piece of paper slide that under and now I've got my baseline and I've got my happy penciled out. Now I can brush less to the happy, you know, and I can see a bit less because I've just got my pencil line. And I could sort of use that as a guideline as well. I'm going to loop back up from the back of the P there to create that. P and then I've got to loop out to the next one and you know of course lift up the, the brush take a breather after every letter because you then connect it back onto it no one's going to know that you've taken that break either you know if you, that's a good place to take a break as well rather than perhaps there when you join it again sometimes the ink builds up where you lift the pen off and then when you join it down again you know you that's visible that little join there's visible so you know always lift off after you've done your leads out so if you do that and you could do it's the same way do the birthday as well then you can create yourself a little caption so i've got a little happy birthday caption here that i've brush lettered myself and you could even use this on um, a card. You know, you can go ahead and make a greeting card for someone. 
Now, another thing that will help explain, actually, the, the next thing I wanted to share with you is the beauty of these pens. Now, I've got here a square of acetate and I'm going to scribble with the brush side because you get a nice solid line. Scribble some ink onto my um, acetate. Let's use the green as well. You can add different colours. I try not to overlap the colours, but I can sort of do this around. And then I need to get some water. So I'm bringing the water brush. Now I need a little bit of card. Now here I'm going to use um, the Faber-Castell watercolour pad. So I'm going to grab a sort of a corner of this. Now you can do this in a couple of several ways. You can do it in a controlled way. So I'm adding water to the um, ink, which is obviously water-based. And I'm going to scribble, um, like, like I'm making a background basically, like a watery background. I can add more intense colour. I can add drops of just water from the water brush. I can then go in and start adding some green areas, you know, create some splashes. Um, I've thought I would use sort of a five by seven cards. So I've got a five by seven card blank here. And I'm just going to sort of roughly do a watery background that's that size. So you can add colour, add splashes. Let that dry naturally because you do get sort of lovely effects appear. So you can do that more controlled sort of way, or you can add lots of water to this and then grab your piece of paper and pat it down on top. So if I just oh, rip that out and just place that on top and then lift it off and you'll get sort of a watery effect as well. And then you can just add splashes of water, let that dry and then you end up with, cut it out, and then you end up with a nice watercolour panel like that. And then what you can do is cut it to size. So it's actually, I need to get a paper towel, I'm just going to, mop this up otherwise it's just going to get everywhere and you might have to take that away so we've got this watercolor panel it's going to fit on the top of our card blank and then what we can do is get our lettering that's it here it is and that's um, a good size to go on our five by seven sort of panel and then what because because this is like a vellum, it's like tra it's tracing paper, but it's like a vellum. If you put any glue on it, it's probably going to show, especially a wet glue. So what we could do is position it where we'd like it, fold the ends over. So get it quite taut, fold the ends over. Oh, look, there's another example of a watery background on there as well. So I could use that one or I could use that one. I might go for this one. Add the glue on the back, and then you can either then glue this onto our card front or use foam pads. And you know, there we have it. We've got our hand lettered, brush lettered greeting card. And you can personalize this as well. Wouldn't it be lovely just to have someone's name across the top? You know, you can sort of start getting creative with your hand lettering quite quickly as well, I think, by by this cheating method. <laughs> I like the layer of the tracing paper on there as well. This adds a little bit of something different, doesn't it? That's right, depth. yes. It's really it, cute. Yeah, it, it sort of, yeah, you are covering your, your background, but then it is a background and it adds the sort of texture and sort of a different dimension as well. Yeah, lovely. So right. greeting cards is a quite a nice thing to do for your lettering. And I've got some examples here. Um, of greeting cards that I've done. So I've done this one in black and I've, you know, I've, I've done it on paper and I've, you know, I've created a little panel that I've attached to the card. So, you know, you don't have to write directly onto a card and ruin the card blank. You know, you can add 
you know, little panels of your brush lettering on there. So there's a thank you card. You know, here's a celebrate card. We, I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually got like an ombre effect. Now, this is quite interesting to do as well. Okay. So if I, if I get another piece of another piece of paper, say I'm going to do, let's think of a quick word. Um, I don't know. Okay, I'll just do my name then. <laughs> Let's brush letter my name. See, I'm actually naturally doing it on slight slant because I'm actually, that's the way that I'm sort of doing it with the pivot of my hand. I'm actually naturally doing it on a slant. What we could do, we can then go back to the top areas and add just another um, line of color, extra color on all the downward strokes towards the top. And that then starts to create the depth of colour. And I'm loading the colour on this ink on. And you can start to see that slight ombre effect. And you can take that to a stage further, if you like, and add another colour to it. So you can get quite creative with your brush lettering. You could leave it like that. Um, when I did this hello example, I've actually created a little um, YouTube um, video of this. That's um, I've got a dirty nib on my water brush. That's it. I created a little video, so you know when that's up. We'll, we'll find that and that. share that with everybody. Yeah, yeah. So go over with water to blend this. And I, that's what I love about these water brushes because it's a brush nib effectively as well. I am using the wrong paper. So this paper is going to buckle like mad. So that's how you can create that sort of ombre effect. And then with the bullet nib end of these lovely markers, you can then start adding shadow lines to your lettering to the right of all the lines. Sort of add a shadow line and make it look sort of effective like that. So that's what I've done with, with that card. And then, of course, you don't have to physically brush letter. On this card, I've actually just used the, the thick and the thin and just done like a capital sort of um, caption on that card. And then, you, you know, you can get really adventurous and go into invitations. I've kind of gone a bit sort of funny and sort of created a bit of a, a hook on the end of all my sort of tails, if you like. So, you know, so you start creating your own invitations. Um, wedding stationery, that thing I was going to mention, you know, once you get more confident with your lettering, you know, you could start doing wedding invitations, wedding cards, thank you cards, and sort of table um, signs as well you know table three and things like that you can start doing that other things you can do is have fun with envelopes as well they're quite nice to sort of doodle on so I've got this here that I've brush lettered happy post and um snail mail like an air mail one um that's just that's sort a of a cute bit little airplane yeah <laughs> a bit of fun I did those quite a, quite a while ago now and then of course you can write addresses in in a creative way um here I've sort of done my leading off my page and then done my Maria and then the A is just coming off off the page and then the actual address is in um sort of capitals still with the brush nib and then if you want to get really creative you know you can do it as a real piece of artwork and incorporate banners um, arrows, um, you know, you can create your text um, as an outline and things like that. Still use the brush nib, you know, you, I've done the high street there, that's with the, the brush nib. So you can do things like that. Um, one of the images that we use to advertise the workshop is this um, binder here, and I've actually got a record of my pens and pencils looks like a color swatch really so you know oh, wow thought, that's, that's just, amazing oh, yeah let's <laughs> write a letter the first 
the first pages. Um, you know, you can use your brush lettering in, you know, in your own little sort of references as well. And, and sort of do that. And then that obviously leads into journaling. I don't actually do that, journaling that, as such one, no art journaling. So is that just one binder that you've got with the colour references in? The one you yes. just showed us. Yeah, that, that, that's fabulous. Yes. Like your own little library of colour. I love And then this is like a little travel notebook. And I've got, um, I do more sort of art journaling. So I've just got some printed leaves here. But I, I've done lettering in pencil as well. Um, you know, you can do brush lettering in pencil by just, you know, having a slightly blunt nib. I'll just do it on this show you one here um, have a slightly blunt nib and then come up lightly and then add the pressure down and then it you know it appears to be thicker well it is thicker and darker so you know you can get you know practice with a pencil even but you don't get it so obvious you know when you are using the brush nib I mean I do like to sort of add lettering to my art journaling pages see this this h has got the lead in right up there you know you can do different things with it you know they're so beautiful and flexible these pens and the inks are you know very vibrant they're great i'm going mad with that and i come right up to the top you see with that that sort of the lead out of the o and so can you loop Someone's asked the question, and I was sort of yeah. playing around with it myself. Can you loop and connect the letter wherever you like? Are there, because you've got some really great hints and tips for beginners, but what any hints and tips on the kind of rules or kind of guidelines on how to loop and connect your letters? Um, I think it's, um, you do need to connect obviously to a letter where, where it, where you need to start the letter from. Um, so if I was going to do like the word pen, I can, I can come in for the P and then come down, I'll go back up to the top to do the P shape and then loop in. I need to be in the middle because I'm gonna do an E, um, which starts off sort of in the middle and then I'm coming, a lot of the letters do come from the bottom. So then you just do a nice loop up to the top then, because I need to come down for the, the N, you know, and then I can loop out. A lot of the loops do, are generated from the bottom. And with the P, I suppose you can, if you wanted to, you know, you could loop it back up that way. I've seen some people do that. And likewise with, a B, you know, you can loop it back out. Whereas I quite like to, you know, come through the letter because I just think it adds a bit more movement to it. You know, and you can experiment. I mean, like if you do um, like a T and a, the T and the H is sometimes nice because you can, um, you could sort of stop there for the lead out of the T and then you can do the, the bar of the T and then carry on and come down for the back of the, the H. You know, you can sort of do additional things like that to sort of create different effects. And these sort of ideas come to you. Don't worry about those to start with. They'll come to you and you'll notice nice effects from lettering that you see, um, like with a, a G, for instance, I mean, this is just like the basic G and I've gone back through my G with my lead out, you know, but some people, you know, you might notice some brush lettering and some people might have sort of gone like that with their tail. Um, some people might actually deliberately break the circle and come sort of right, right out, bend out with the, the G tail and leave that broken, you know, or they might even exaggerate that more and just go like that. It, it, it's a G, it looks like a G, but it's sort of broken. It's, you know, it's, it's, 
this is how you can start creating your own style with your brush lettering as well. And I'm, I'm yeah. slightly conscious of time, Sue, but someone has oh, asked about, about numbers and whether yeah. you could, um, if we have enough time, do some numbers for us. Oh, no, numerals. Numerals, yeah. yeah. Numerals. I was just going to say, you know, you can create some posters for yourself as well, or, you know, filling some little bits of lettering in any anything you do. Um, numerals. Use the back of that, or let's use the plain paper. Again, you can start off by writing the numerals in pencil. Again, you you know grab a template. I should do this a bit darker so you can see it, shouldn't I? You can just do your basic right. basic numerals shape like that. Six, seven, eight. With eight. You must sort of start at the top. I've seen people do eights from the bottom. <laughs> start at the top. And then, of course, you've got your zero. And then you grab your trusty tracing paper. They're very similar. Basically, you are doing thicker strokes down again. So you do that little bit at the start lightly. Come down with your pressure. Just leave it like that. Again, loop lightly come down. Crossbars are fine. And then with three, that's thicker and thicker, tailing off to curl back under. The four, stick coming down. That's a sort of a T-bar, so that'll be light. You can go thicker down there. You know, so it, it sort of comes naturally to you, you know, where you write your numbers, that's thinner because that's a across bar okay that's great you're making it look very yeah. easy <laughs> and you're going up fine come down down thick and then the, the o. that's generally just sort of does that basically i suppose that's a differentiating it from the the o the, the zero being like that that's great Thanks, yeah, like, you know, just it's just basically your own handwriting, but just giving it some thought and adding that downward pressure when you're when you're writing and take your time, take your time doing it. I've got like a creative sort of poster here that I've done some capitals with the with the brush marker. You know, come down again with all the thicker letters. Capitals again is another thing. Um, that I haven't really gone into and I've you know used the watercolor to, to sort of do this border line as well there's so many creative things you can do with these brush pens um one one other thing I can I quickly mention this this is quite clever with this one here you know I've used a different color for a shadow um you know green and the yellow is lovely yeah yeah I mean you can I don't know if I've got that green but you know you can go in and add highlights you can add you know more depth of color to the top like I said and um, this this is good I've actually just written the word calm and then I've just got a spritzer and just spritzed over it and it's moved the ink it sprayed the ink out and I just think that's a, a lovely that's lovely you didn't move yeah. it at all just use the spray to disperse it yeah yeah I just wrote Great wrote the word and then um, do it quite lot, quickly. That's a great effect. Yeah, do it quite quickly. I wonder if it will work on this paper. Yeah, it's just creating different effects. Yeah. You know, you can carry on doing it as much as you like. Mm. You know, allow that to dry. You know, it creates you know quite a nice effect. So there's you know you can get very creative with your with your lettering as well. That's fantastic. I like I like that one. I like the ones that look easy for my own. Yeah, and then with this one, I two colours and blended yeah. it in to mix them. I've outlined it with a black fine liner. How you did know. you do the blending on that one? Is that with the water? I, I just did the yellow. Yeah, I just did the yellow first and then went in with the blue over the top of it 
halfway and then got the water brush and just sort of wiggled the ink about to blend it in. I created a green, wiggled that about. And um, another, another cute thing as well with, with the brush pen is if you turn your work upside down and then just tap in two places, you create little hearts <laughs> as well, just mm. with the nib. Little hearts. If you go all the way around, you, you can create a daisy or a little flower. Yeah. That's lovely. Right. I mean, I could go on all night. <laughs> with different different things. That's that is that is brilliant. I'm gonna I'm gonna do you want me to switch your camera back on briefly? I don't know. Yeah, I, you can come I don't back. know if I can actually. Oh I can, I can ask you. There you go. And we can pop up. I don't know if you can see that. There she is. Marvelous. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna add me. That's that's fabulous. Thank you. I th I think it's worth just reiterating right at the end because there's some for anyone just starting out. And I always think of me because I, I I don't think of myself as particularly creative. And we do these, and I I like to have a go. So obviously the pressure's on the downstroke, which I get from watching mm -hmm. and I'm watching the rhythm of that. And then you have some other hints and tips as well so the crossbar is always fine they're fine yeah always yeah. fine but the dot the dots, dots are a little stroke yeah yeah pressure for the dots um create this nice little stroke yeah all, all crossbar fine swashes are all fine as well generally and um yeah have an experiment uh, practice practice and the other one i'm doing there was the 11 o'clock and the seven o'clock when yeah. you're doing the the down the, the round doing the swirl. yeah well yeah. I'm using the wrong term you're going around to try and get the right pressure on yeah which is great I, I think love that that's just really helpful hints and tips to get everybody started I think the tracing paper as well is fantastic that's yeah it's so good um it's brilliant so, yeah yeah, yeah. And now, then you can use it for designing as well you can you know, you can create your uh, word and if you're not quite happy with it, you can, you know, add swashes and on and layer another tracing paper over the top and then write it again because you can see what you've done underneath. You know, you can then design it again. It's all about designing letters, you know, making them look beautiful and brush have away. Have a go. Have fun. I say, yeah, have a go. That's brilliant. Mm. Thank you so much. Right. I'm conscious of everybody's time. So I think a couple of people are saying it. They need to go. So I think that's probably everything for now. But like you said, we could have we could have carried on for some time. So perhaps we'll manage just to get a part two in soon at some point. That would be lovely. But thank yeah, you definitely. very much. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. That's fabulous. And I think everybody hopefully is aware by now, but we have recorded the session. So give us a couple of days and um hopefully towards the end of this week, we'll email all of you. So if you registered for the workshop you'll get a follow-up email and it will have the link. Um, we put everything on YouTube. So the link to the workshop will be on there. So you can go in and, and have a look and you can practice your drills and you, you can copy what Sue was doing with your tracing paper um, ready to go. So uh, we would also love to see anything that you create if you're happy to share, go on, be brave. Um, so we <laughs> have got a social media hashtag, um, which is Colt Pens Creative. So if you do post something, you want to add that hashtag Colt Pens Creative in full, then we will see that. And if you're happy, we may well message you and ask if we can share and things like that. But we'd just love to see what you're um, creating. So that would be great. You can also follow Sue on social and we'll send all the links in the follow up email. So um, all of that will come. And I think that's it for now. So just just everybody goes off, lies in an ice bath or um, has a very long cool drink or even a glass of wine at this point. So um, I will uh, say thanks again, Sue, for your expertise. That was amazing. And thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And we hope to see you all again very soon. Have a lovely evening. Thanks, everybody. Cool.